Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today is day 253 of playing chess every day until 2000 ELO. We're sitting at 1764. Let's find our opponent. We get the black pieces against Fathom G. 1786. Playing D4. And they play the Queen's Gambit. We're going to play the Albin because I want a little bit more practice in the Queen's Gambit decline before I play it. I could probably just play it, but... Let's let's play the Alvin counter gambit. What screw it? Why not? I've been slacking on my my opening study because I've been busy with school. But we will play e6 in the near future. My opponent is thinking in this opening, but it's probably a good thing. And they play a3, just a typical move to try and play here. So I think on a3 we we play a5 to stop the expansion, or maybe we go here, but then a5, pick up the pawn back. So maybe we just develop here first and allow this. We're attacking the pawn. Okay, so they go there. Now we're going to play a5 to stop this. And it looks like they want a Fianchetto here. So I'm thinking I just go for this plan. So let's bring the knight out. They want a Fianchetto and castle, which is understandable. And I want to win this pawn. So if I go here, the only issue is that if I capture, it opens up an attack here. I don't think this is a good move. But let's go here. Let's double attack the pawn. And maybe we need to play rook b1 or rook b8 to protect this pawn. Because takes, takes. Well, that would be fine. But takes, takes, takes. This pawn is still protected, actually, by the bishop. So I can just get my pawn back. So let's actually, let's just take the pawn. He pins me. It's kind of an interesting move. I feel like developing's not bad. Well, actually, that's it is bad because he can just push, and if I take, then he takes. So I think I just take here and then try to trade this. So he wants this, which is pretty clear. But I guess if I go here, I know he's just block with the bishop, and I finish my development. I mean, we just go here, and then we're looking to castle. And if he allows me to take and triple his pawns, that would be very ugly. And my pawn is being a nuisance, not allowing him to develop to the c3 square here. And he just takes, of course. And now queen takes. I think it's quite obvious. Pawn takes would be silly. Here, I'm just kind of thinking maybe there's a push, but no, I don't think so. Queen takes, and then we just try to castle. He, yeah, he's going to go here. He's trying to play this, and he's also opening up his bishop here so i guess let's go ahead and castle yeah we were threatening to win the pawn so i guess now we need to come up with a plan he's gonna go here and try to put more pressure so what if i actually play a4 here just to stop the knight from going here but then he just goes here then i can pin it this is actually defended twice but he could sacrifice the bishop here and if he moves actually i just take this so maybe we just bring the rook to the party Maybe here or here. One of those two moves. If I play here, this pawn will become very weak, but I can plan to push it. It also gets out of this diagonal, which I don't really like the alignment of. So, yeah, let's go here. Let's go rook here. He brings the rook, maybe trying to get some pushes or something. A4 would have been such a bad move. Well, no, because it was protected. Never mind. Ignore me. So, I kind of want to just play here. But what happens after he pushes? I drop back. And then we're... Th I want to trade this bishop, to be honest. So if he pushes, I just drop back, I think. And we can always attack the pawn with a move like b6, assuming that this is protected. Speaking of protection, I feel like the queen here is not uh, an unreasonable move. I could have ideas of h5, h4 to try and split the pawns, potentially. This is my extra pawn, and it is kind of weak. It is a pass pawn, but with so many pieces on the board, it can be targeted. So maybe the idea of putting the rook here was one to activate. Oh, what? What does this even do? Hmm. I mean, part of me wants to play this, but that just allows the queen in. But is the queen doing anything there? I don't quite know what he's going for with this. I can't move the knight right now because the pawn drops. So maybe I go here and then try to rotate over this way, but then walks into this kind of stuff. He's targeting this pawn drop back and try to attack the queen seems reasonable here this seems like a very annoying move actually so maybe i go here 
So this doesn't come with tempo. I don't know why he hasn't played that move, actually. I'm going to drop the queen back. Maybe he wanted to trade this bishop off for some reason. I don't think so. There's the ninth move, yes. So I'm sensing that he wants to come here. We play this. Does he have a move? I mean, I feel like just attacking the queen here is not bad. Could push and then threaten me to trade. Probably not, though. This also seems reasonable. Weakening, though. No, 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 because then I just get my bishop trapped. That's an idea. Just completely threaten to... No, it's not. So then this falls. Maybe I go here. With the idea of playing this. He's still going to go for this and try to checkmate me, but I can just simply move it. So let's play d3. The promotion score is actually covered also by this bishop. So he probably needs to, yeah, do something there. And instead of trading, I want to bring the rook here, to be honest. Takes, we take, we're one square away from promoting. We would actually be threatening stuff here. Let's come in, bring the rook in. Rook takes, I think, is a mistake. And we still have this idea because there's alignments with the queen and king here. He could play here. Takes, and then this. No, he just takes? Really? So I take. I mean, obviously the move is takes, right? Bishop takes might be better. No, my opponent just resigned. Wow. Okay. I don't know why he resigned. Before we before we take a look at the analysis, let's let's just sit here for a second and analyze this position. So my mo my opponent takes the rook, which I don't think was a good move. I'm still better, according to the engine. I do have the engine eval right there which you guys can see. Taking is a mistake, for sure. But how do we proceed? Is it pawn takes? Obviously, if I take with the bishop, then this is a nice anchor. But if I take here, does he just have this, takes, and then this? No, because we have check, sacrificing the queen, and if he takes, then I promote to a new queen. So I actually think this is the move. And the engine, it appears to approve. And now what can he do from here? I'm not threatening to promote right now. I'm I'm attacking this though. So what if he goes here? Plus 50. Oh, well, then we take that dummy. So he can't even go there to protect this. But if he moves the knight, where can he move the knight to? He could move here or here. But if he goes here, we just, we just sacrifice the queen. So what is the move that he can do? Like, I, I genuinely don't even know what he can play here. Is it this? So that after I take, he takes the knight and he covers the promotion square? No. But is taking the right move? I don't know. All right, let's look at the actual analysis. So I played with an 81.1 and my opponent played with a 71. So we got d4, d5. And this is the Albin counter gambit, as you guys know. Knight c6 is spook. He develops. And now we play a5 to stop b4. He tries to fianchetto. I just developed my knights. And we do this, this is a very common reroute in the Albin that I'm aware of, is just to try and win this pawn back. So we do. And he goes here, which we just, that. We missed something here. We should have just developed to e7 instead of trying to trade it off. We allowed the rook check, but I thought we could just go bishop e6. But apparently they don't even want me to go bishop e6. They want bishop e7. Which is kind of weird to me. But, okay. So we get castled. And out of our gambit, we're already equal. So I kind of like my position here. And we already make a mistake. So I should have just pushed the pawn right away. The thing that I was missing in this position, I think is just... I'm missing that he can come in with tempo. And let's see if that's what he missed. It is, yeah. So he could have just developed the knight into the center of the board with tempo, forcing me away. And then he's probably got, the, like, queen comes in ideas with this. But he comes in first. I slide back because I, I finally noticed that there's this knight move. But apparently we should have just pushed right away. The computer really likes d3, which is very logical. We go here, attacking the queen. I guess the computer just argues is not needed. The queen just moves. We should just push our pawn. And like this looks pretty terrifying. Queen here. Now we push. What could they have played though? Queen here is the only, well, 
I don't know if it's the only move, but this keeps equality, probably because they're threatening to go here, winning the queen. So in this position, we probably need to move either our king or what else can we do? We got to move our king or queen. We can't really move our queen here because then there's just discovered check. Well, I guess we would just take, but that looks scary. And I guess we could go here to offer a queen trade, but I don't know. What's the move? Is king here good? Nope. Queen e6 is the top computer move, which just looks very terrifying. But the thing is, there's no good moves for the knight. The knight goes here, we sacrifice. They go here, then we play this. And they just lose a piece. So I guess we just needed to not be scared. We should have just calculated. But I wasn't even thinking of that. I just immediately played this. And they go there. And then we push. He goes back. He has to, really, because I'm going to remove this and then push. Bring the rook in, which is not the best move. What should I have done? Bring the knight in. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of the idea behind pushing d3 was to bring the knight here. And then we're, th we're threatening to, like, go here and kind of stuff. Not right now, because that's just, uh, I don't know. But I did, I did see this alignment. And then they take and resign. And now the computer is actually saying plus five. So let's see what the computer says. D takes. And you just win material according to the top engine line. D takes. What if they go here? Yeah, then, then you just drop a piece. You drop the ninth. Right, so they just had too many problems. Out of performance, ELO of 1900 versus their 1650. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow.